we like to call it the supernatural hour. And now, our hosts. Hey, welcome to the Supernatural Hour. This is your host, Raven. Hi, I'm Chad. This is Rogue. I'm Emmett. This is Doc. This is Jess. It's been a long time since we have all been here. It's kind of nice. We are remoting some people in, though. Yes. Yes, we are. We're all across the country. Yeah, I, th- I think everybody is remoted in except for me and Chad. And we live together, so. so it he was has, easy that way. <laughs> so he has to sleep with one eye open. I was about to say, <laughs> if, you, if you two are remote calling in, there may be some bigger issues at home. <laughs> <laughs> something you're not telling us all right for the junk drawer i did not know this but i ran across the mission of a cat this is interesting you know most people think that cats are just kind of you know egotistical stuck up and you know they don't do much but eat and sleep but apparently they they do some some cool things um according to this little thing that i ran across um, on a facebook page called witches and old souls It says that cats have the power every day to remove negative energy that's accumulated in our body. And so the idea is when we fall asleep, they absorb that negative energy. Um, If there's more than one person in the family and only one cat, it can get some excessive amounts of this negative energy. They, you know, they just absorb all of this negative energy. And then when they sleep, the cat's body releases the energy, takes it away from us. But if we're too stressed or there's too many of us, um, it can't get rid of it all. And so it turns that energy into fat. So if your cat's really fat, it's not the food you're feeding it. You've just got too much stress. So you need to get another cat so they can kind of... Dissipate the, the stress together? Yeah, so they don't get quite so fat. And they also protect us during the night. Uh, they keep unwanted spirits from entering our house or our room while we sleep. And that's why they like to sleep in your bed. If they think they're fine, if they think we're fine and everything seems cool, you know they'll they'll go sleep somewhere else. If there's something strange around us, they'll jump into the bed and protect you. So that's kind of why they do that. If you don't have a cat and the stray cat comes into your house and adopts it or like your yard, then you need a cat at that particular time. That particular cat just volunteered to help you. They're like, hey, there's a human. They need help. They've got creepy spirits, so you should thank that cat for hanging out in your yard. If you have other cats and can't keep the stray cat, you should find a place for him because that cat came for a reason, you know, unknown to us, and you need to take care of it. It also says in dreams, you can see the reason for the appearance of that cat at that moment. It says there may be a debt, some karma he has to pay, so don't freak out or frighten the cat. Cats can heal us. I thought that was interesting. Hmm. All about cats. So what does it mean when the cat gets up, you're sleeping in the middle of the night, and it puts its face right in the middle of your face? It means it wants you to pet it. Our cat does it every once in a while. It's super annoying. It doesn't want to be loved until like 3 in the morning. <laughs> it's like, why can't you be lovey at like 5.24 in the afternoon? Maybe it's because there's spirits hanging around us. Could be. It's sucking up all that negative energy. Check out our shop, advancedparanormal.com. We've got YouTube, we've got TikTok, we've got all sorts of other social media, so go out and do that. We encourage you to go out and subscribe. Those really help us get further reach to other people on especially the YouTube channel, so we do that. We want to give a shout-out to our patrons who also help support us. I think we've got nine or ten patrons, and we appreciate their their ongoing support to be able to help pay for the websites and all of the different things that we do. Emmett, do you have a segment ready? Sure. In fact, um, I want to talk about, for, you know, most of the last month I've been down for medical reasons. But uh, while I was uh, home convalescing, I um, went out in the backyard. It was a nice, it was a clear night. And I just, I happened to see a new UFO configuration that I have not seen before. Oh, wow right from my backyard and this appeared uh just as a point just looking up in the sky a point of light that just came out of nowhere was very bright just like a star appearing then stretched out into a bright line just a straight white line it just grew from a point to a white line about the length of uh oh the size of a silver dollar held at arm's length 
And then this thing traveled overhead, maybe 12 or 15 degrees. And then that line turned back into a point and disappeared. I've never seen anything like that before in my life. Wow, that's kind of cool. And, you know, just, uh, you know, right there over the house. And, you know, I have seen a few UFOs from there in the past, but not they're not very common. Right. So, uh, and I have never heard of anything like this before. So I'm, I'm reaching out now with some of my contacts to see if this configuration has ever seen be- has been seen before. But, okay. um, you know, everybody listening, we don't just do, you know, ghosts and and uh, and spirits and things, but we also look at the sky from time to time and, uh, uh, you know, do do look at the, the UFO connections. So, yeah, Emmett's he, spent quite a bit of time out on Skinwalker Ranch with the production, correct? Well, yeah, last year I did. I spent three days and nights uh, working with the show. I was on uh, season three, episode four. So if any of you saw the episode with the, the telescope guys, I was one of the telescope guys. Yeah, that episode is... Uh, silver. Silver? Yeah, you're the silver one. The silver one. Actually, Rich is two years older than I, but that's okay. <laughs> I was just trying to help them to identify. <laughs> so, yeah, that, that was cool because that's the night we actually saw the, the biggest and brightest and closest UFO that's ever been seen on Skinwalker Ranch before. It just happened to be when I was there. Um uh, it still to this day that even the cast says that's one of their favorite episodes. Yeah, and for our listeners uh, that may not know this, Emmett is an astronomer also, ghost hunter, well, yeah. astronomer. He's he's a, a Renaissance man, a man of many talents. It, just an advanced amateur. I'm not a professional astronomer, but I've been doing it for over half a century and founding member of a, one of the local astronomical societies. So been around a long time so I, I was just very lucky to get the chance to uh, work with the show myself and, and two other advanced amateurs who I've known for a while and Emmett give a was, pitch for your astronomical society for the local anim- as- astronomical society well, I'm, I'm with the Salt Lake Astronomical Society uh, my two friends who uh, were on the show with me they're with the Utah Valley Astronomical Society uh, and, and both are terrific clubs, so it just you know it depends on where you live. Uh, can uh, they find those on the web? Can they just in search Utah, for those? Yeah, I think it's uvaa.org for the Utah Valley Club, or uh, uh, the Salt Lake Club is uh, uh, slas. Uh, uh, it's either slas.ut or slas.org, uh, so try those. All right, those sound interesting. Yep. So if you know whichever one, Salt Lake or, or Utah Valley, uh, and even uh, Rich, who's the, the president of the Utah Valley Club, he's actually come on some investigations uh, with Advanced in the past as well. So um, there's quite a bit of crossover, you know, between uh, uh, people who, who look at the sky a lot for UFOs and, uh, you know, the, the, the people who go ghost hunting. So it's, it's not one or the other. I was going to say, if you're interested in astronomy and you're not local, you can probably just look those up on, your, on the Internet for sure. astronomical societies in your area. Yep, it's, there's, they're all over the country. Uh, most societies are you know, patterned pretty closely. They're just clubs of like-minded people, and uh, uh, they're all terrific people. They'll, people go out of their way to... to to help you if you have an interest in astronomy it's a good place to start all right what do we got next so i was uh kind of thinking i have another ring (laughs) that has um it's from maine it's the uh it's green tourmaline so i was like okay well let me think about like what's the florida um stone so the official state zone of florida is agatized coral and so um, it's also the official stone of Michigan. So I guess all that lake there. But um, it's supposed to be for like helping with recovering from physical or mental trauma, which is pretty interesting. And it was um, created, I was looking that up and it disappeared. But it was created like, I don't know, like 20 million years ago and stuff like that. So. Um, I thought it was kind of interesting because, like, yeah, it makes sense with Florida and its waters. 
So I think, and I look at it and I was like, oh, I have seen that at mineral conventions. So yeah, I got to look into it deeper. All right. I want to remind you all about Supernatural Hour swag at advancedparanormal.com for all, I mean all, of your swag needs. There's some cool swag on there. I actually just looked at it the other day. Should I be worried? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe, but I, I bought a new piece of equipment, so so no, I think you're okay. What'd you get? Um, I don't know what it's called. It's triangle shaped. It's orange. It's got a green light and a red light in the corner. But it looks cool. Yeah, well, you, you, it, it's they had a limited edition. It's called a Flux 2. It's supposed to be kind of like a K2 meter. You know, light the okay. green one up, light the red one up. Um, and Protect since, EMF or something? Yeah, and I figure since my Ghost Meter Pro is kind of acting like crap, maybe I'll use this. But there's a black one, and then there's a limited inch and pumpkin orange one, which glows under black light, so you know I had to get that one. Smells like pumpkin spice? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> cool. All right, well, we have done some exciting things, and I, I don't want to say we because I haven't been there. I know, um, we miss you. I know. And it's been, you know, the dates, like when you were at the cemetery, I was at my um, grandson's baby shower. So, Fun. you know, I've had some things pop up even just this weekend that, you know, life has to take over. So anyways, you've been at the library, you've been at the cemetery, you've been at the hub. So I want to hear all about it. Yeah, we're exhausted. <laughs> I've never looked more forward to a hiatus in my life. It's It's been super fun, though. So I had to write down. Let me pull up a note really quick because I had to write down everything that we did. Um, so at the cemetery, you know, it was it was so muddy. Yes, it was. Right. And I pulled into the parking lot figuring that it would be gravel, and it wasn't. It was like two inches of soft, gushy mud. Right, and just kind of where we parked. Once we got out into the cemetery itself, it wasn't, but getting every, everything set up, I had probably four inches of mud. No no exaggeration, four inches of mud stuck to the bottom of my shoe. Um, but it was rainy, and it, it really kind of stopped while we were there up until maybe the last half hour. I think we ended about a half hour early because it just got, everyone was cold and it started to rain. Um, for my group, it was actually a little quiet. We didn't have a whole lot going on. Um, one of the gentlemen in my group got touched. You know, there's a, a male spirit that was following us around. But two years ago, we got our one of our investigators, Sylvia. We met her at the cemetery. And she's been with us for two years, and we just love her. She's amazing. Two years ago, she had a very negative entity that was following her around. When she got there with her group, she was just mentioning you know, what had happened to her group and mentioned this entity's name. And no sooner did she mention his name, you know, the name that we had given him, um, than he just materialized, poof, and kind of harassed her again all night, which was kind of annoying. Yeah, so it was it was quite an active investigation. I know that your group, you said, wasn't as active as it had been last time. But it was a, it was a nice night. The the rain beforehand driving up there was, you know, white knuckle driving up on I-15. But when we got there and set up the tents, um, no hard rainfall at all. It was, you know, um, a little bit light towards the end of the evening. But it was not, you know, it wasn't windy. It wasn't, it wasn't harsh conditions. And it was relatively warm. Mm, yeah, it really was. Up until maybe that last... 45 minutes or so. And when I say relatively warm, you needed to be dressed for, you know, cold weather, but it wasn't, you know. It wasn't bone chilling and, yeah. I mean, it wasn't windy. If it had been windy, I think it would have been miserable. Yeah. And I think the only reason it got cold that last 45 minutes was because, you know, the rain was moving in and I think the humidity it was going up was even going more. Up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And everybody enjoyed the hot chocolate. We had hot chocolate and we had uh, red vines and, you know. Red, red vines are gross. Well, I know, but I... They don't do Twizzlers, so. Anyway. So one of the things, this happened, this has happened at the last two or three investigations that we've done, is I'll have the Ghost Meter Pro, and the idea with the Ghost Meter Pro is it, it lights up if a spirit is in contact with it, and then it has a dial. And the dial, 
we can use for yes no questions we'll say click the dial once for yes twice for no I think castle does it backwards for me but I do one for yes two for no and I don't know what it is but you know a spirit will make contact and light up red and I'll say okay show me one for yes and it'll click one for yes I'll say show me two for no and it'll show me one for yes and I'll say that's still one show me show me two and it'll show me one and it'll do that like five or six times and I don't know if my well, I don't think the machine is malfunctioning because finally I'll say Charles, who's my spirit guide, I'll say, Charles, will you show the spirit that we're talking to how to click it twice? And Charles will answer yes, and then instantly it'll click two times. It's kind of cool to see that, you know, confirmation. Um, and then from then on, the spirit can talk twice. I don't know what's going on. Could that be a language problem? Maybe. I don't know. But as soon as I ask Charles to to show them how suddenly boom I get two clicks it's hmm. kind of cool yep and then we went and did the American Fork Library one of the things that's so at the library presentations we put on we have a PowerPoint you know the PowerPoint takes about an hour hour and a half depends on how many questions we get and you know how chatty we might get and then we do just a mini investigation you know just enough to to kind of put into practice what we've kind of talked about in the in the presentation Show them like how the dowsing rods work and the ghost meter pro works. Mm -hmm. and, and then we'll kind of, you know, hype our next investigation. And I, I oh. was there last year. I couldn't make it this year, but I, I was, you know, even for the sh shortened investigation, I was impressed at the activity there. Was it, was it as active this year? Uh, uh, yes and no, kind of depended. Usually we, we do one of these invest er, presentations. We had four this year. We had four uh, libraries and community centers call us and say, hey, would you come do this? But it's interesting because at the American Fork Library, not only is the library itself inside haunted, because the librarians will tell you stories of things that go on, but right outside there's a DUP museum with, what, maybe four or five little log cabins out there? Yeah, historic yeah. from when the pioneers first came into Lehigh in the area in American Fork. Mm -hmm. and yeah, I remember those. Yeah, and last year there was a teenager from my neighborhood that was there, he and his mom and sister, and they were there again. And there's a teenage spirit there that just thinks he is the bomb. So they were in my group again. I've got, you know, my flashlights. You know, if you take a mag flashlight and you turn it to where it's just barely not right. on. Yeah. Um, and then if you touch it, they turn on. Well, in one of them I have a green lens, the other one I have a red lens, so that I can try to establish intelligent communication. Right. You know. You know, for the listeners that don't know what I'm talking about, you get these flashlights, you turn them to where they're just barely not on, and then the idea is if the spirit touches it, there's just enough mass there to uh, complete the connection and the lights will come on. And when they work, they're fantastic. And so I've got a green lens, a red lens, and then that way I can say, okay, you know, if I'm talking to a spirit and you want to talk to us, turn the red one on and the red one will come on. Or, you know, now flash the green one twice and the green one will flash twice. And so it's just a way to establish intelligence. But I don't know what it is with the red flashlight, but it just, it rarely, rarely comes on. So I need to get another one maybe and see if it works better. But the green one works quite well when people, you know, when spirits engage with it. So That I, flashlight thing was, that was one of the very first things that got me thinking that something was really happening mm -hmm. in the paranormal world. Oh, yeah. Well, we've, I tried that because it, that, that works. Oh, yeah. We've had some really fantastic um, investigations with those. I had them both sitting there, and I say what I always say when I set them out, you know, because I'll set out everything because you never know what a spirit's going to engage with. And so I said what I always say, which is, you know, try to touch these flashlights. I say, you know, people, spirits can rarely turn on my red one. As soon as I said that, this teenage spirit, boom, turned on the red one. And not only did she turn on the red one, she turned the red one and the green one on at the same time. And everyone oohed and awed, especially a couple of people that investigated with me before, and they know that the red one never comes on. And then she turned both of those on at the same time, probably, I don't know, 10 times. Wow. And my daughter was with me, and she actually got video of it. So we'll get that video up on TikTok. Do you think that was the same teenager that, that I was feeling last year down in the basement? Was it in the basement area? No, this was out by the cabins. I think it's a different one. Oh, by the cabins. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Probably a historical spirit if it was up by the cabins. Yeah. You yep. think? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yep. 
She's actually an adopted child to two other spirits that are out there and had lived in one of the cabins. Wow. We were at the Hub Theater again. We've been there a couple times now. Three times? Four times? Uh, I think it's three. And... That's another really cool, really cool site. It is. So after we did the presentation, um, one of the groups just sat in the theater. And we had... um, We could tell that there was something in the theater and that, you know, everybody was sitting on the stage with the equipment out. And we determined that there was a type three, which in our little group's jargon is a demonic entity. And we had put a laser grid up on the wall, kind of by the stairs that goes from, you know, the the seating area up to the stage area. And you could see distortions in this grid. And we were talking about it and pointing it out and kind of, you know, you don't call out a spirit because they will come and wallop you, but you can roast them a little bit. So we were kind of roasting the spirit a little bit. And um, you could you could just see right where the spirit was standing. And so I pulled my camera out and I said, hey, I see you. I'm going to take a picture. And I snapped the picture. And as soon as the flash went off, the laser grid on the stage, which nobody was anywhere close to, I mean, the the closest anybody was to it was maybe seven, eight feet away. Mm-hmm. As soon as I snapped the picture, the laser grid fell over. And one of the wow. guests was taking video of it at the time. He showed me that video last night. Did you see that? Yeah, and we have we have the video of that too, so we'll throw that up on TikTok. I have rarely gotten spirits to move things or knock things over, and so I was super excited because this is, for me, a rare occurrence. That's cool that, that it was documented, too. Mm-hmm. I was like, I hope someone videoed that. And at first, everyone's like, no, we missed it. We missed it. We missed it. And then later, one fellow came up and said, look, I got it. And I was like, yay. We were also getting very distinct knocks in that theater, you know, knocks in threes. Right. I was out on at the concession stand at the theater with some of the owners of the theater, and we were talking about business and some different things. Skyler, one of our uh, investigative leads, he opened up the door and he said, did you guys tap and knock on this door because they had all heard it three times and you know we'd been over over by the popcorn and the drinks and no we didn't hear it but a number of the people in the room and he he heard three distinct taps on the door to the theater Hmm. yep and i I wasn't there for that one but i had been there earlier because i was kind of floating back and forth between the groups but i had heard one set of three knocks earlier and then I was gone when the when the second set second yeah. sets came through. So it was a quite an active evening. I remember that's the first place I saw a naked eye orb was was it the hub. I remember that. Several of us behind one of the on the stage behind one of the screens. And didn't you say uh, they were yeah. pink? Yes. Yeah, I yeah. think I remember that. I was there for that. Yeah, there were several of us back there and we all saw it. Oh, that's cool. That's totally cool. Yeah. Good venue. From what I know, those are kind of the most exciting things that happened mm-hmm. this month. Had some good stuff. Yeah, it was fun. Our investigations were brought to you by Castle Photo Art. We're really grateful for Castle for his help, things that he does, and his promotions. And if you, for your photo needs, go out and have your pictures taken by Castle. So for the business, we don't have a whole lot of business. We have been extremely, extremely busy. This last couple of weeks, we've done a number of investigations and a number of presentation. But for right now, we don't have any upcoming events. We're going to be on a little bit of a hiatus until January. Yep, so enjoy the holidays. Um, If you are an insider, you get a newsletter with some of the holiday things that we're doing. So if you want to get in on that, just hop on over to Patreon and um, join up. And we will be continuing with our regular podcasts. That's not changing. We're just talking about events and we will continue with residential investigations as they come up as far as public investigations we're going to be on a bit of a hiatus until january we're also coming up on our 200th episode of a of supernatural hour um so we're going to have some fun things planned for that yeah, we don't have it planned yet we just have some ideas but that should be about february ish yep some, some exciting ideas from what i'm hearing so stay tuned everybody I'm excited for it. All right. Stay spooky, my haunty friends. Have a good night. Love you, Nicholas. See you next time. Have a nice night. Bye. You've been listening to the Supernatural Hour at AdvancedParanormal.com. 
The Supernatural Hour is part of the Radio Ronin Network, found at RadioRonin.com. Copyright by Advanced Paranormal Services.